Welcome everyone to Satoshi Chats episode 6. Today we'll be discussing stores of value. Yes. Would you like to dive in a little bit more on what we'll be discussing? Yes, I would like to do that. Um, so storage of value. It's an interesting topic. It's one we've covered before very minimally here on Satoshi Chats, except for maybe gold. Um, we, we might have covered it then. Um, so storage of value is just essentially, it factors in time, and it's just how, um, how well a certain good object, thing, anything, really, you can apply it to anything. Um, as you'll see, you can apply it to anything. Um, it's how, how well something um, holds a certain monetary level or en essentially energy level um what it's worth you know what it's uh, and it's not usually it's not essentially based off of usability it, it could be based off of other things so it's 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 its worth preserved over time essentially um and uh, that's how we're going to be thinking of storage of value uh, of value today so we've got quite a few storage of values here as a few forms of that um and I think we should start off with the age-old storage of value, don't you think? Uh, Before you uh, hop into that, I, I want to point out it's quite interesting. You say it's um, mm -hmm. pretty much the, uh, the amount of energy that it could output, which is quite interesting because, for example, um, think of you know the website like a domain. Mm -hmm. um, it's like how much energy can that... How much, um, you know, interaction will that bring? My name is this. My branding is this. It's, energy is an interesting uh, way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just think that's the best way to think of it. Um, and uh, and we'll describe that. So um, let's start off with the oldest form of energy storage of 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 storage of wealth and of value um and that's land introduce us to land oh, jack so land is just i mean i remember i'll start off by saying this i remember being a a, a little kid and asking my dad i'm like how did people like buy a house buy a house back in the day like what did they do and he, and he told me they literally just Put a fence around a piece of dirt and said, "This is mine." So, and I was, I was like, "Wow, that, yeah." I was, I was quite blown away. But um, more modern uh, uh, land serves as a store of value because if it's in a highly, um, you know, wanted uh, area, uh, someone might be looking build a house um, exactly where you own that land so um, and also when house prices go up land also goes up in value because there's more want or more demand to to live there um, land uh, vacant land can um, be a good store of value but I don't think it's the best store of value mm -hmm. um, yeah uh you describe there the the essentially you're mentioning scarcity as in there is only land. so much yeah. land right uh because city. people want it and there's only so much uh you know orange county is a good example of that uh uh you know tustanite homeland uh you there's only so much land and everyone wants it and uh that drives the value Sleep. of it especially uh coast um each each front property yeah. there's very limited amount of that yeah and um and so so that's that's one thing i think we can compare uh land to bitcoin right it's scarce it really is scarce and there's not really a good way to make it make more of it i mean there might be migration in sure. terms of wealth as in a new area pops up and it's like area. how bitcoin only has 21 million um you know, uh, 
uh, LA, Los Angeles only has a certain amount of area to, to work with. So yeah. It's it's quite um quite scarce. It's quite de definitive. Unless Um, start building upwards and using high rise high rises to, to store more, you know, humans essentially. Um, yeah. Then you know, there's a very limited supply. Set yeah, I amount. Mean, yeah, like as you say, uh, there's always upwards, but that won't ever be as valuable as the ground, uh, uh, the ground level stuff. Um, you know, I think ground level stuff will always be most valuable but who knows i could be wrong maybe sea level stuff will be good because you'll be in the sea and there will be sea citadels everywhere um but so that was one thing that was comparable about land and bitcoin let's talk about the one thing that i think is incompatible and and uh and doesn't work land value literally relies on a government that is there to enforce the law of land ownership Right. And Bitcoin does not rely on the government to enforce a law. Yeah. You don't need you don't need to, to let the government know that you own your Bitcoin. Yeah, you don't pay property tax. Well, you pay selling tax, but you don't own you don't pay property tax on your Bitcoin. Yeah, you don't. Last time I checked. No. Last time I checked. I don't I don't think so. Um and and most importantly, you don't need the the government to protect your bitcoin for you right like if i get uh, robbed i call the police i can't get robbed of my bitcoin so therefore i need no police for my bitcoin right there's the, the first problem isn't a problem yeah um and so land is it's a good store of value but it relies on a stable government so you better be investing in a place that you believe in the long term you know yeah. So, uh, what goes along with land uh, as a store of value, Jack? Um, you could, um, you know, to get to the land, you need to get there somehow. So, what other than a vehicle store of value? You're right. What is your opinion on using a vehicle as a store of value? So, um, I am connected with this because. My family has used, not my, well, my immediate family, as well as my extended family, has used cars as stores of value for their my entire life um, and their entire life because we have a passion for cars. Um, I think they're very intricate pieces of engineering. Um, they're obviously new. It's not like like land we've been we were talking about. That was an ancient form of land of wealth storage. You know, land has always been wealth. Cars are obviously within the last hundred years, so or so so um so. You know it's new, but there are certainly cars that are worthy of storage of value. Now, the funny thing is, any car that has a a, a value to it that is ascending is one who's scarce, who has like less coming out. Uh, there's less of that particular model or vintage yeah more old school right the older it is the more rare it is the different types the different trim levels all sorts of things can add up to a value for a car and it's all about scarcity it all comes back to that um so i wonder you know it's how rare it think, is yeah it's curious to think that that would be such a good comparison at least to describe to like some of the old you know the car market the old vintage car market which is the primary storage value um, type of cars uh, that's mostly older people I wonder if you could make a good comparison to them and tell them you know hey yo you, the, the reason you store your your money in your car uh, because it goes up in US dollars that's why you should be putting your money into Bitcoin the reason Bitcoin's going up in US yeah. dollars is because the US dollar is going down they understand it for their cars they know that the same money doesn't buy the same car anymore you know um, they yeah. understand that their money is, 
Yeah, exactly. They've experienced the inflation firsthand. So um, it's funny that that um, scarcity is it is what it all comes back to. And I wonder if you can make that comparison for them. You know. Yeah, exactly. Scarcity is is one of the most important things. Yeah. Um, what's next? We got cars. Um, what about houses and real estate? We could we discuss, I guess. To park the uh, to park the car in certainly. Yes. Um, <laughs> kind of goes hand in hand with land, right? Um, yeah, it's you need a similar. government to protect it. Um, and the problem I have with certain houses, right? So. Houses are, a lot of people think that because they buy a house, it's guaranteed to go up in value. Well, I bet the people who bought in Detroit back in 1950 thought that their house value was going to go up. But a lot of house values in Detroit went down. So you really have to be wise about your decision making. Not that those people should have known, but rather uh, because obviously there's complex forces that make certain areas go down. But rather what I'm saying in terms of choosing it as a store of value, which would mean investing, kind of. Um, you really have to be careful about where you choose because... It would have been a safer option at the time. Right, or like uh, uh, fire-prone areas, beachfront areas who have falling cliff sides. Right. Right, like you, you really have yeah, to think I about saw, investing. I saw a, um article about... A neighborhood with a sinkhole underneath and um, it immediately made all the house values completely worthless yeah your entire life savings that's I'm why sure home insurance covers that maybe yeah that's why people take out large fiat debt to cover their house because in all honesty folks you're it's better to do that because if you lose your house then you don't suddenly have all your net worth wiped out um, yeah like if if I owned a house currently, I would be in debt for it because, uh, you know, obviously if that would be a large percentage of my net worth, so I wouldn't want to have that tied up there. Whereas if I had a large net worth um, and it was a small percentage of it, then, you know, it doesn't matter. But um, it doesn't matter as much for most Americans, that's the huge chunk of their net worth. So it always makes sense to try and kind of keep that down by continually, uh, continually borrowing essentially. But um, it's a topic for another time, you know, cheap debt in the United States. Yeah. So what's the next storage value beyond houses? Um, uh, paintings. paintings. Just like paintings. Um, very interesting uh, how they keep their value, uh, especially after the artist uh, passes away, especially because it just comes back to scarcity because after the artist dies, they aren't able to produce any more paintings, so the, there's no flow into the market, so value goes up. Yeah. Um, you know, paintings obviously kind of have that like aesthetic aspect to them. Right. But, um, so it's like difficult for us to just say like what their value is. Um, their value is what people are willing to pay for them and uh, as you said like it goes back to scarcity like once someone pays a certain amount for that painting it really only goes up from there because time goes by the painting gets older and suddenly the painting's worth more um, and yeah. so like uh, I think I think paintings are, are particularly scary you know artwork is a particularly scary at least for me form of storage of value just because of how delicate it is obviously you have it in some sort of safe or whatever but then it's almost like well the artwork isn't being beheld you know it's not being looked at it's so is the aesthetic value lost um it's more of a um it's more of just it's more of just to have it in your house just so that you know it's more of a a conversation starter oh this is a rare whatever i mean people just have them to display them there's some sort of 
um, passion for the artist or the, st the style of artwork that they're displaying. So it, it also comes to the partially of a hobby standpoint, just like cars. Uh, some, of, some of these have uh, more hobby-like uh, traits of why people keep them. Because I, I'm sure if old vehicles weren't as valuable, people would still collect them just for enjoyment of the vehicle itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the hobby aspect, like the interest drives a lot of it. Like, obviously, the reason the air-cooled Porsche is more, you know, it, it's just as rare, if not less rare, than like some old station wagon that um, that is you know made by some obscure brand but yeah. the Porsche is obviously on a utilitarian and aesthetic aspect and as a hobby aspect way more valuable so that's why it has a big value um, so there's certainly something to be said about like the the hobby aspects of many of these storage of values like as compared to land which is a traditionally more secure storage of value I mean, uh, yeah. So. so yeah, I, I, something I could uh, add to the paintings is also uh, trading cards. Just trading cards like baseball, basketball. Um, just, just like the reasoning of, of, again, going back to scarcity. It's also hobby standpoint, but for, for scarcity, it's you know most valuable cards are usually the rookie cards of one player and that's because it's you know there's a limited amount of because of what after the first year it's not he's not a rookie anymore so there's a limited amount of cards of him as a rookie and um obviously the value goes up if you know it's like a jersey card because obviously there, there's a limited amount of jerseys that he could wear um and yeah, it's 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 it, it all goes back to scarcity. Yeah, that's is the the player cards are interesting because, frankly, they're of people, you know, um, like every other aspect of storage uh, that we've talked about has been based on some sort of value that we apply to an inanimate object but this one is actually based off of people and their actions like uh yeah like obviously the more famous players are going to be more expensive so does that mean the more and famous it's what players they do to are perform more in real life yeah like does that mean the more famous players are more valuable in real life than the other players uh no and yeah <laughs> yes in terms of monetary worth obviously uh, and yeah. that just comes with in terms the territory, of energy right? that they could, yeah, yeah, in exactly. terms of energy, energy that they could provide, mm -hmm. energy for like the network, right? Uh, how many viewers can they attract uh, because of their skill? Yeah. Because they put, they expel physical energy, and that in turn gets gets turned into sort of a communicative media energy, and uh, that turns into a monetary energy. And therefore, yeah. they're worth a lot. Um, that's how. The economy works we as i've heard before uh, we reward entertainers quite a bit um, yeah we do and that includes athletes because no one wants to entertain actually well because no one's good enough to entertain i think you right know? um you know everyone wants to entertain no one's good enough to entertain or at least on a certain level uh to entertain on a pro soccer level or a pro professional level. level yeah exactly it's just uh unattainable for most people but yeah that's an interesting one uh cards playing cards the last one is uh watches if you would like to uh, yeah to totally them. so i'm a watch nerd uh the test tonight is a watch nerd um i'm i'm into the into the swiss swiss ones um obviously there are more expensive ones like Patek Philippe and stuff like that um, that are like super price range. Um, the funny thing is a lot of watches are obviously based off of value from their brand, but a lot of it has to do with 
the precious metals and precious stones use. So like, uh, uh, you know, a gold Rolex is significantly more than a non-gold Rolex because it's gold. Um, so it's, it's, it's funny because a lot of the value can be just simply be tied to the, to the metal use, metals used. Um, obviously, the raw metals aren't are cheaper than the watch, which has been turned into an exquisite art piece. But um, it's certainly something to think about that a lot of the raw material plays into the value. Um, as far as like things like Rolexes, Rolexes hold value for a few reasons. Um, you know, it's an enthusiast kind of thing. A lot of people love them, and a lot of people yeah, think more that. Hot hobby like as well yeah extremely hobby like um obviously it's a wealthier hobby like thing um right they hold their value in terms of their metal um their metal weight a lot of people think about it in terms of that i think that would kind of render like you know the stainless steel ones that doesn't mean anything to me but um the the i think you know to be a real storage of value, you're gonna to want to get a, a really obscure watch that's obviously scarce. It comes back to scarcity. Um, if you got a main production Rolex, it's gonna be less likely to hold its value as well. Now, traditionally, Rolex watches and other watches in the Swiss Swiss watch world have held their held their value really well. Um, so, I think that's really a testament to uh, the the falling value of the US dollar. Watches have always been relatively expensive. I recall watching yeah. those road shows where this guy said he bought a, a Swiss watch for like a hundred dollars back then. And he said that was almost like two months of his paychecks. So uh so obviously they're they weren't ever particularly cheap, but it's a testament to the failure to hold value for the dollar, um, as to how much dollars they cost today, you know. Um it's not like they're valuable because of the uh, fact that they tell the time. <laughs> that's certainly I mean, not it, yeah. Yeah, that's certainly not it. Um, it's, it's... Yeah, and like, I think a lot of it is like conspicuous consumption, certainly, but I think there's a lot to be said for like timelessness, like the watches last forever in terms of, so it's like a, you know, when people buy things nowadays, everyone per expects everything except for maybe land everything we've talked about uh, is a good preservation you know and watches in particular are good like preservation like as in it's something you can give people that lasts a long time uh yeah uh and so i think in particular watches are good at being like some sort of heirloom and i think a lot of people buy them in terms of thinking in the future and i think that's something cool and kind of unique to watches out of all of these is that um uh, they're sort of a tradition rather than a someone thinking of like an investment or something like that it's much more of like a i'm passing this down to my family sort of thing than a uh than a oh i'm trying to preserve my wealth you know right yeah it's more of a um you know you know it's value and you know it's going up in value but you're never gonna sell a watch right yeah like it's your it, if it's your grandfather's watch like you just keep the grandfather's watch so I think they're funny. I think they're. I'm. I'm a big fan of watches. Uh, and uh, one day when I am wealthy enough, I certainly plan to buy at least a couple that would actually store value relatively well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's it uh, for today, folks. Relatively quick episode, but I think uh, an interesting one to discuss, just because right. um, the storage is of value that we discussed today are so so they unique the yeah they're unique they're the traditional way that people thought of uh holding their wealth and now bitcoin has come in to disrupt kind of all of that and you know it's curious to think about how each of these markets is going to respond right like um you know will will any of them lose hold to bitcoin we are not in the market of predicting that. But what I can say is that each and every store of value will respond to the introduction of a new store of value, especially one which will hold such capacity as Bitcoin. So it's very interesting to think about the future of these different stores of value. 
Yeah, I still believe, um, obviously, out of all of these, Bitcoin is still the most superior. <laughs> yeah, and so um, we'll certainly see into the future how that plays out in terms of preserving these current stores of value, which have traditionally done well. We um, think that'll be it for this episode. Um, peace out.